Day after he was fired, former FBI Director James Comey is apparently not looking back. President Trump also speaking out tonight about that decision to fire Comey. KKL9 political reporter Dave Bryan has more on the fallout from the firing and reaction from both men, Dave. Yeah, Comey seems to be the only one who's not angry about what happened. We'll talk about that in just a moment. The fallout from the firing of the FBI Director continues to grow tonight, most of it coming from Democrats, as you might expect, but even a few Republicans have indicated they're not entirely comfortable with what happened. Meanwhile, James Comey looked to be quite okay with removing himself from the political line of fire. This photo shows a relaxed and smiling James Comey dressed casually on the day after the FBI director was fired. In a letter to FBI agents and his friends obtained by CBS News, Comey wrote, I have long believed that a president can fire an FBI director for any reason or for no reason at all. I'm not going to spend time on the decision or the way it was executed. I hope you won't either. It is done and I will be fine. He wasn't doing a good job, very simply. He was not doing a good Good job. Ironically, with some critics comparing Comey's firing with the Watergate crisis that enveloped former President Richard Nixon, President Trump met with Nixon's former Secretary of State, Henry Kissinger, in the White House Wednesday. The White House called Comey's firing the result of an erosion of the president's confidence in him. He'd lost confidence in Director Comey, and frankly, he'd been considering letting Director Comey go since the day he was elected. Director Comey has shown over the last several months, and frankly, the last year, uh, a lot of missteps and mistakes. However, there was no sign of the president's dissatisfaction when he warmly greeted Comey in January, nor when Mr. Trump said this about Comey last month. No, I have confidence in him. We'll see what happens. But new reports indicate Comey was fired just a week after he requested more funding from Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein for the FBI's Russia collusion investigation. Rosenstein wrote the memo in which he criticized Comey's handling of the Clinton email investigation, which President Trump cited in firing Comey. And there are further reports that President Trump was furious at Comey for not supporting his baseless accusation that President Obama had ordered Trump's campaign offices to be wiretapped, and for paying too much attention to the Russia investigation and not enough to stopping the leaks. The decision to fire Comey raises questions about the appropriateness and timing of firing the person in charge of an investigation that could, I won't say would, but could implicate the administration. To have this happen and happen now is beyond surprising. Now, Democrats are pushing hard for an independent prosecutor to take charge of the Russia collusion investigation. Let's get to the bottom of this. Let's bring in a special prosecutor who is outside of government, has no political label, has professional credentials, can put together an investigation and determine what the facts are. But the Senate Majority Leader says there's a certain hypocrisy to the Democrats' outrage over Comey's firing. Our Democratic colleagues complaining about the removal of an FBI director whom they themselves repeatedly and sharply criticized. Senator McConnell was referring to statements like this about Comey from L.A. Congresswoman Maxine Waters back in January. We can't tell you anything. All I can tell you is the FBI director has no credibility. And the president turned up the tweet heat. The Democrats, he wrote, have said some of the worst things about James Comey, but now they play so sad. Later, in another tweet, Mr. Trump called the Democrats phony hypocrites. But even a few Republicans agree the Comey firing doesn't look good. The, the timing and the, the, the reasons for this decision uh, did made little sense to me. And uh, I don't think I've heard anything since last night that would clarify that in any way. Now, Senator Burr and the ranking Democrat on the Intelligence Committee have asked James Comey to testify before their committee next week. I think Jim Comey ought to have his, if not his day in court, at least his day on the Hill to be able to lay out his, his side of the case. Now, we haven't heard any updates tonight about whether Comey will actually accept that invitation to talk to the Senate Intelligence Committee. But if you look at the letter Comey wrote to his friends tonight, which we talked about in that report, it doesn't appear likely he would want to do that. But who knows on this story? Maybe he sleeps on it and changes his tune. Yeah. Anything is possible, yeah. right? Right. Anything could happen. Yeah. So, Dave, the deputy attorney general wrote the memo to the president that was used as the rationale for firing That's right. Comey. 
Have we heard from the uh, deputy AG about this? Well, we haven't heard from him, but we've heard something about him tonight. Tonight, still another late development in this story. The Washington Post is quoting a person close to the White House who spoke only on the condition of anonymity that Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein threatened to resign after the White House made his report the primary reason to fire FBI Director Comey. In fact, the president's letter to Comey strongly indicated that he fired the FBI director because of the recommendation from Rosenstein. So we'll see what comes out of that, Jeff and Lena. Yeah, we will see what comes out of that, Dave. Thank you so much. Okay.